Hello and welcome back to the She Gallery Show. Thank you so much for being with us tonight and thank our special guest for being with us. We have some amazing members from the Brickheads crew, break dancers, original here from Chicago from the early 80s. We have um, Breaking, breaking, breaking. Ray, co-founder of the Logan Square uh, Writers Bench. We'll talk a little bit more about that. The Eagle, and we have Angel um, Brick, who is also here joining us today. And you have been celebrating the evolution of Chicago style graffiti with us for over a year. And if you've really been a part of She Gallery, then you've been celebrating graffiti for all of She Gallery's existence because that is how Sharing His Energy Gallery started. And we have come a long way seven years later now working with the pioneers. And it has been just such an amazing journey. We celebrated um, the graffiti element of hip hop and we are now moving into break dancing and seeing DJing, love, unity, community, all those great things that matter um, because we're going to be celebrating all of these hip hop elements on April 16th at the Epiphany again. So you guys were with us at the opening of Family Resemblance, the Evolution of Chicago oh, Style Graffiti, um, the exhibit that opened at Chicago's birthday, which was a great, great, great success. And we have Trickster there doing tours every Saturday, and uh, the exhibit is still up and going until May 7th. We encourage you to visit Epiphany Center for the Arts. We have an amazing roster with 10 of the first pioneers that help shape the style of graffiti here in Chicago, including graffiti, including Trickster, who has been a co-host and a co-member, co-curator um, here with us. And um, now we're moving into these elements of break dancing. And we have some very, very esteemed guests here who are going to also be with us and joining us this day of the Hip Hop Jam on April 16th. So why don't you guys tell us a little bit about your history here with Chicago? Okay, for sure. Stuff. So I'll start it off a little. You know, I was, I was born first, so <laughs> in the break, I'll slow down just a little bit. <laughs> um, I started in like, kind of like the summer of '82, just learning about the basic elements of what it was to like break dance. Um, didn't quite understand it that much, so you know I brushed it off, but kept on like dabbing into it so uh uh there was a field house by my house called mozart school so uh, they would be practicing there and stuff like that so i would go look inside try to get permission to come in and be a part of what was going on in there um in the beginning i, I wasn't allowed because i was like the new kid in the neighborhood and stuff like that how old were you uh what, like maybe 12, 13? Okay, curious kid. Yeah. So, so from right there, it was like, I'm the new kid. I was like doing, doing like little bully stuff around the neighborhood. And um, so they were like, no, nah, you can't come in. So the next day I went back and I was like, yo, and came in to try to get in. But this time I asked the, the, the guy that worked there from the field house. So he let me in, so I just sat down at the bench and I just seen everybody just doing like little donkey kicks and that was it. Butt spins and that's it, you know? So I was like, you know, I was like, yo, I want to try that. They were like, yeah, just go ahead and practice. We're, we're just practicing. Was this so, the first time seeing breakdancing? Um, it wasn't like actually the first time of me seeing it. I actually seen this one guy named um, George Calazzo. He was a mastermind rocker, first generation. Here in um, Chicago? Here in is Chicago. This your inspiration? Yeah. Okay. No, I just seen him, looked out the window. Like I said, I just came into the neighborhood, looked out the window. He was walking with a cardboard box um, by Mozart Park and just laid it down, did a move. I just happened to like be looking out the window, seen him do that move, and I just ran out the house. <laughs> My mom screaming at me, telling me to hurry up, get back to the house, and I just like disobeyed completely. Like, <laughs> I needed to. By the time I got there, he was like disappeared and stuff like that. Were you confused as to what he was doing? Yeah, what to was like your what he was reaction? doing. Yeah. It was. It's kind of like tricky because my cousin, um, he's from New York. His name. His his name is Solo. Um, He's actually um, a baby Zulu and stuff like that. Okay. He came to Chicago way back, like maybe 79, and he was kind of like 
telling me, showing me like break moves on the floor. But at that time, I was like, whatever. You know what I'm saying? I did not get it whatsoever. And he was like, I was always trying to show you like, you know, what's, what was happening um, in, you know, at home and all that, his city and stuff. But to me, it was like, I don't, I can't see myself doing that. You know what I'm saying? But so to cut it short on that part was like, we were at the field house, the, um, we were practicing, the culture was becoming, you know, it was becoming open and stuff like that. People were um, coming from different parts of, of New York City. Uh, we had one from New York City, his name was Ray 104. I consider him, him being like the first Puerto Rican in Chicago to come actually like with the style of what it is to be a b-boy. He had the outfit, he had the shoes, the gazelles, the hat, and he had like the footwork to go along with it. So he had all the backing. All the of, style. Yeah, he had <laughs> what it was to be that. So he came to that field house, he was like, he showed us his, his style, boom, boom, and then he was like, gonna leave. And I was like, hey, what crew are you in? And he was, at first he was like, I'm, I'm a scrambling feet. He said something about this one thing called scrambling feet. And it was like, to me, it was like the way you moved your feet, your footwork and stuff like that. So I always had that in my mind, like, wow, that's dope, the way you move your feet and stuff like to a freeze. Because that's what he did. He moved his feet like really crazy. And then he just froze. He did a chair freeze. And it was like, whoa. <laughs> so, but um, Ray 104 was, later on became, uh, made a crew called West Side Rockers. West Side Rockers was like a straight up, um, a crew in the Logan Square community, but they were like hustlers. They would go to downtown and, you know, get money and stuff like that. So everything that he was doing, it was like money related and stuff like that. You know, you gotta understand him because if you lived in New York, you know, the hustling game of like getting your money and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So while that was happening, our crew, we were trying to like figure out like, if we were gonna be a crew or not, some people were like, yeah, we need to be a crew and stuff. So we're like, we need to decide a, a, a name. So Kit Kayser, um, who was the vice president of the crew was like, well, we live in Chicago and we were, you know, this is the culture of hip hop, you know? So the terminology of, of what the culture was, it was already out. So they had a really good understanding of what it was. So what a, you know, we said a couple of names. We were like, nah, that's cool, yeah, yeah. So, we, um, but Kay Kayser came out and said, you know, we live in Chicago. Um, this is part of hip hop. So why don't we call ourselves hip hop furs and add the ERS to it so we could be a little bit more aggressive <laughs> and stuff like that. New York, they use the AS on it, right? Mm -hmm. So we always say, you know, AS is for asses and stuff like that. You know, eh, 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 eh. So, <laughs> so, yeah. So, you know, we're in a little rougher city, so we like to use the ERS on it and stuff like that. Um, so our crew was our, the crew that was, like, loved by the community, uh, loved by the people, but at the same time hated. They hated us because we were like, like that, not a bully crew, but we were a crew that we... If you confronted us, and we will address that com confrontation mm -hmm. A force easily. to be reckoned with. Yeah, so <laughs> it was like, especially like with um, Shuffler Supreme, like it was like when you would be up rocking and stuff like that, he would just have like, you know, he would be up rocking and this all of a sudden you just got stolen. You know, and it was like, now it's a crew fight. <laughs> so we were like the, the troublemaker uh, crew and stuff like that. So when we went out to like, let's say the Rainbow, the Rainbow one time kind of like told us, hey, you guys can't come in here. They seen our shirts. We had uh, maroon and white t-shirts and stuff like that with the name of the crew and everything. And they were like, oh, you guys are those hip hoppers. No, you guys can't come in here. So we were so mad, it was so cold outside. We like slammed their, their door and we like shattered the whole door. <laughs> so now we were like really not gonna go in there. <laughs> and that's very interesting that you say that, that um, that it turned into fist fights because the, the break dancing, there's break dancing, but then there's the competitions with the break dancing. Right, exactly. And a lot of times that was the healthy ways of competing with others, right? Um, by, by keeping away from the from the violence. Right. 
Um, so I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna I'm gonna ask Angel to to or I'm actually, I'm actually I'm gonna ask Angel to let us know how you two met and awesome. how he got involved with your crew. Nice for sure. <clears throat> well, um, yeah, we me and Ray met about oh uh, well I want to say early '90s between '92 '93. Um, we're kind of from the same neighborhood, same we grew up kind of in the same area. Um, so a lot of, it's funny that a lot of people that he already knows about were people that when I was a kid, cause I'm from the era where in 85, I was like 11. So that was kind of like the height of break dancing as far as like media wise attention, stuff like that with movies and commercials. So I was kind of in that age group where it was like, it was, you wanted to do it, but you were kind of too young to actually go places and go to competitions and, and go where all the teenagers and the older kids were at. So you kind of had to just like watch and learn and go find out where people were practicing at and kind of just watch. Like me and my cousin that were actually used to break dance together when we were kids, he lived on Keeler and Palmer and there was a corner building and in that basement was some teenagers that used to practice all the time so we used to always just go to their window in the basement and peek in and watch and learn and try to pick up whatever we could pick up then we would practice and then when these guys would come out of their practice sessions we would kind of like show them what we got because we were just so desperate we wanted to get in that basement so bad with these guys but they were just older guys so they just didn't really mess with us but they would come out and they would interact with us, you know, they would give us pointers. I mean, they were cool dudes, they just, they were just an older group, so it was like kind of odd for them to just be like, come on, we're gonna bring these kids in here with us. Mm -hmm. But um, <clears throat> Ray actually knows those guys who were in yeah. that basement. So yeah, it was, was kind of fun. Mastermind Rockers, um, that was Mastermind Rockers. Mastermind Rockers had, their crew colors back in the days was um, gray and blue. And uh, Willie Diaz was the president of Mastermind Rockers, and he was actually the one that created the song "Can You Dig It." Uh, that was the video. Famous. Yeah, take take was uh, take two was just sharing that information and B Boy B. I was trying to yeah. download the information. <coughs> so yes, for those of you who are familiar, mm -hmm. yes, can you dig it? Yes. Yes. Awesome. Sorry, not to interrupt. Um, oh, something that I'm finding that that it's it's this common thread with hip hop, right? These, these kids that are looking for this place to be together, to unite, that continue to challenge themselves, whether it's to learn a new style of graffiti or a new dance move, but it's finding, it's peeking, it's peeking through that window and peeking through that window and, hey, what are they doing? Hey, what are they doing? You know, you said it, you said it. Um, when, when speaking with Warp, when we had Warp on, um, we're talking about graffiti, it was, it was this big, huge ordeal to just have a meeting with a bunch of kids because it was that impossible. So we're talking about youth, the youth that's creating spaces for the youth because they're finding that this is something that the youth needs. Yes. Yeah, and so exactly. then you started the Eagle. You want to talk to us a little bit about the finding of the Eagle and the, the writers bench in Logan Square? Well, before, and what that is, the yeah. competitions. Um, before it be actually became like the Eagle, it was... Um, it was uh, Westside Rockers, Ray 104. He, him and his crew used to um, used to practice there. Mastermind, I mean, uh, Westside Rockers used to just practice there whenever it was nice outside and stuff like that. Um, it was also um, artistic bombing crew's little headquarters where they used to just hang out, ride their little bikes and then, uh, things like that. And you guys uh, remember Artistic when he was in our show? And if you don't remember him, visit our website, sharinghisenergygallery.net, Can TV, and check out all of our previous um, interviews. Yeah, so um, Chicago had a thing where we we got influences from New York um, with writers' benches. So we kind of like started creating writers' benches here in Chicago. Warp had one in Cabrini Green, um, oh. then B Boy B. And ABC, they decided to do a meeting, and they had they had it at Logan Square at the Monument. Um, it was really big and stuff like that. So throughout the years, it came and went back and forth. Um, the culture was like 
a little bit dying down and stuff like that. Uh, I met Angel Briggs and stuff like that. Kind of like gave him a little bit of history of what uh, the writer's bench was and how important it was. And him and Waka, they took, they took it upon themselves for like to do like little practice sessions within the crew or anybody that was willing to come in and, and practice mm -hmm. there for like over 10 years. Like ten years straight, and then you know, like t life takes its course, and you know they get married, they have kids, so it becomes a little bit more difficult for them, mm -hmm. and all that. So yeah, you know, stay I, a kid. Yeah. <laughs> so don't um, fall into that adult trap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not falling for it. I'm glad you brought up Waka. Um, can we take a look at this? Yeah, sure. All right, guys, we're gonna share a little bit of some break dancing. Um, let's see if I could get our screen on. Thank you. Alright, this is the 90s generation. Oh, sorry. It's <laughs> not the 90s, 90s generation. There we go. Here we go. so aggressive um it was like controlling the floor that's like one of the things that we, uh, i used to talk with the uh, angel and uh walk about was like when you go to the floor you make sure you control the floor and when you leave the floor you make sure that you're getting the respect from the b-boys and b-girls that are going to be coming in next where there actually used to be like a pause like the fl it, like you we would leave the floor sometimes and it was like yeah nobody we got to go next okay <laughs> send somebody in why don't you come on in you got permission soul to come train in. yeah beautiful no not, not, not a soul train it was like competition you ain't, you ain't coming into that floor until we ready for you to for you to come in into that floor that that much of an aggression and stuff like that and uh waka he he took that like uh, He's like not so very trino. personal, <laughs> and he made it his own with the, along with his style and and what the brickheads throughout the year uh, contribute within the culture is so amazing and stuff like that. If if you're from Chicago, you know uh, everything that the brickheads had contributed to the city of Chicago was to make you a better b boy mm -hmm. or a b girl. Beautiful. Thank you so much for that. Um, and and many of you may remember b boy b, of course. Um, who is part of our roster and he's talked to us uh, a, a little bit about some stories. He shared some stories about the Eagle um, specific to the to the, these competitions and how beautiful it is to see these generations. Um, B-Boy reminds us that during their era there was nobody be before them doing this. So this is a brand new culture. Um, so when you see somebody that's brand new to this culture and then they see this little tiny kid that's trying to mimic them, you know, what, what does that do to you? How do you feel about that? Yeah. You know, like this, this is one generation and then you have Angel here who's another generation. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what, what does that mean to you, this evolution of this movement and this culture and what is hip hop? That's a question to both of you. I did say I was going to ask both of you. Yeah. Oof, man. Oof. For me, it, it it's 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 a lifestyle for sure it's definitely a lifestyle it's something you live it's not just like it's not some media thing that's created it's definitely something that you live um the most thing that I, that that i love about this culture is that it comes from the streets it was made from the streets by people from the streets for us so if we control it and take care of it the way our elders intended it to be 
it can be very prosperous. A lot of people can learn from each other. You can build bridges with different cultures, different nationalities. Some people you probably will never meet in your life, but this art form brought so many different people together that to me that's the what I like the most of, about it. Beautiful, thank you. Yes. And as you mentioned, that respect, to make sure that you're leaving the respect for the next person, that's a beautiful thing to teach. Exactly, yes. I couldn't echo those words uh, any more better than what he said. Um, like, uh, the whole reason I got into like the culture of hip hop was exactly that. It was a detachment of like, the negative things that were happening within our community. And um, experiencing those negative things, it was like you have a choice. You can go this route or you can go this route. Both routes will take you somewhere. It's up to you where you want to be, what you want to what you want to experience in your lifetime. And the perfect example to that was like um, my son, he's in the Navy right now. and. Um, one day, he, we, we were having to talk about the cultures and stuff like that, and he was like, you know what, Dad? When I was a little kid, I was in school, and this kid, he told me if I wanted to be in a gang. And he said, I'll let you, I'm gonna come back tomorrow, and I'm gonna find out if you're gonna be in our gang or not, and stuff like that. And my son thought about it throughout the night, and he was like, I can be this person that's in this gang, or I can just be me and stuff like that. And he chose to be himself. Beautiful. And he went to the person and said, hey, you know, I really don't want to be a part of what you're doing and stuff like that. And got his, you know, he got his respect from the person that came in and talked to him about it. Um, and that was like something very brave because our youth, every day we get confronted by situations like this in our community every single day. Mm -hmm. uh, and there needs to be tools that pretty much put them hip to what's going on with situations like this and how to address them and stuff like that. Because if you're sheltering your kids and you're not talking about what they need to confront when situations like this happen to them, they fall prey to that situation and stuff like that. So, yeah. um, you know, and I'm glad you brought that up. How do you think that um, that our society and evolution is is shaping hip hop? Because we're not in the streets as much as we were anymore, right? Our kids are doing everything online. Yes. Um, so, do you think that there's less bullying or more bullying, cyber bullying? What's how how do they differentiate that kind of how do you you know that kind of bullying behavior? If it's online, if it's cyber, is it worse than if it's physical? Um, being not in the streets, like I don't know, maybe kids are not being as confronted as much to join gangs. Uh, I I don't know. Like, how do you guys think that that has affected, or how um, uh, technology has affected hip hop, or if it has? That's that's a tough question, right? Sorry, yeah, that just yeah. came out no, of what you awesome just said. <laughs> but it's important. We were talking <clears throat> about that. You know, I was like, you know, when going into the West Side with Trickster, and I always mention this. Like, I'm like, where's the graffiti? It kind of starts disappearing. He's like, there's no graffiti over here anymore. He's like, the kids went into music. They went into this, and it makes me wonder if at one point we're not going to see graffiti on the streets anymore, right. or we're not going to see these competitions because everybody's doing their stuff online and on their NFTs or whatever's going mm -hmm. on next. You know, what, what happens? Yeah, technology definitely plays a big part in our youth getting out there because everything is so much easier now. Um, I mean, back then, it's like you had to go outside, you had to go meet people, stuff like that. Now you can just sit on your couch and you can just type mm -hmm. in, you just socialize like that. Um, I think that's one of the biggest things, that technology is making people really lazy as far as like getting out there. Mm -hmm. So when they are confronted in the streets, like Breaking Races, how do they react to something like that, right? Or does that even happen anymore? Um, and how do we keep this culture alive then? Is that a better question? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. So, like, the culture is the culture. Like, they will once somebody was like, "What's your definition of the word hip hop?" and stuff like that. There ain't no definition, you know that. Hip hop is, is you. You know, you can't tell me how I feel while I'm doing what I consider to be hip hop and stuff like that. Sometimes I don't even listen to like rap music because it's 
so out there with negative stuff that I just listen to the music that I grew up with, salsa, bachatas, and <laughs> stuff like that. And I call that hip hop. You know what I'm saying? So, like in reality, you can't tell me I'm less hip hip hop if I'm listening to my culture because hip hop is is taken from little bits and pieces of different cultures and stuff like that and added into one, kind of like salsa. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> all mixed in and all that. So on that note, is, is that's my definition of it, you know, yeah. my own personal. So um, Orko mentioned that uh, D DJ Jesse De La Pena, who we'll talk a little bit more about in these last few minutes, he was like, um, you know, Jesse De La Pena really introduced me to all these different cultures. Nice. I learned about salsa. And, you know, and this is a DJ that really brought all these cultures together through music. Nice. You know, so that's, that's really important. And we were talking about the yard earlier, so... Mm -hmm. I grew up like a, a rave kid, and this is how she gallery started, because from throwing parties, when I knew that I couldn't afford a gallery space, I'm like, wait a minute, I know how to do this. This is how we used to do it back in the day. We used to find a spot, get a DJs, get some stuff, mm -hmm. sell it. You know, we used to make real money, and we would just use that money to have another party, and it was just the flyers that would get you to that next spot, right. because only those people knew, and the yard was one of those checkpoints to get to the raves. Mm -hmm. And we go into this, um, this full circle with Larry, and, and Jesse De La Pena and The Yard, and you were sharing a story earlier about yes. about that. You want to yeah. share it with the public? So The Yard had a competition of, like, they were, they were going to do a commercial for MTV. So they had a competition, and um, it was um, Popcorn and Trickster won the competition. And since I used to go to The Yard a lot and stuff like that, I was in the competition. I kind of, like... Um, didn't make it to that last two r rounds and stuff like that. I was I was gonna be chosen by Crazy Legs to be in that round. By Crazy Legs. Yeah, and then but I told them no, you know, pass it to somebody else and stuff like wow. that. Cause I just felt like Aww. they were gonna get me. You know, if it wasn't popular, <laughs> it was gonna be Trickster and stuff like that. Because they had a lot. Uh, they had the the pennies and the tracks. You know, uh, and head spins and stuff like that. And even though in my earlier years, I uh, I mastered that. When I started rocking again, I didn't practice it. So it was like I did a lot of footwork, crab walks, and stuff like that. I could have done pennies if I just kept on, because I had a bunch of different styles of pennies. So they were doing this commercial. Um, e popcorn couldn't make it, so they called me and said, "Hey, you know, we're missing one person. Want to be a part of it?" So. Me and uh, Trickster uh, did the yard commercials for MTV here in Chicago. Beautiful. Yeah, That's so cool. A really cool experience on that. Very, very cool. Um, when I got to high school, we had a little tiny, tiny high school, and um, Tony, who is now four, back before he was CMK, I don't know if some of you may be familiar with him, he was not of the first generations, but um, we used to do this. We used to compete. We used to battle with each other when we used to get in trouble and detention, and we started a breakdancing crew, so it was us, and we put up this performance. Um, and going to these little underground events like that, even before that, the breakdancing pyro air crew, that's who I grew up with, they were constantly, like, you know, this dislocating their shoulders. And after a while, it was just like, oh, oh, never mind. You know, at first it was these ER trips to UIC or wherever we would end up at. And then after a while, you just kind of start back. <laughs> popping it back on, you know, and you really, really um, get to know your body, I think. You know, when I look at breakdancing, I think of gymnastics the way that they move their body. This mm -hmm. is a real sport, and this is a very healthy exercise. Um, we do only have a couple of minutes left. I want to remind the audience that we have a hip-hop jam coming up on April 16th, and very shortly, you're going to learn how you can join a competition, both to um, MC, to break dance, and then we want to know if you've been paying attention to the guys when they're talking about Chicago style graffiti so that you can enter a contest on Chicago style graffiti. Winners will be announced the day of the hip hop jam and we'll have more information for that with you shortly. For you, with you shortly, you get me what I'm saying. Um, we have two more segments of Can TV left. Um, we're very excited for that. We thank you for this journey and anything that you guys want to leave the audience with. We thank you guys very much for being with us today and for the jam. Awesome. So uh, I would just like to want to thank Waka for, I mean, it's n we didn't get his permission, but for having his footage up there. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, he's a very amazing b-boy. You should look him up. 
on the Brickhead websites and stuff like that and get to see um, what is he all about and stuff like that. He has a rich history out here in the city of Chicago that if you don't, if you haven't followed it and you're part of the city of Chicago, then you need to do your homework on that. Um, That's why we're here. Yeah, and <laughs> we're I also to like to you. spend, uh, thank um, all the Brickheads that are out there, Spin Master as well. I was talking to him today and I told him I was gonna give him a shout out to. So peace to you also, Spin Master. Beautiful, you Angel? Um, for me, I just, um, to the new generation of Brickheads, just mm -hmm. keep it going. Just um, take everything that the elders have taught you and on the path we showed you, just keep it going. Um, we got some amazing members of our mm -hmm. new generation, uh, Beast Boy, yeah. Cheekies, Chilango, um, Ramin, Magic, mm -hmm. Kess. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a lot of love. Yeah, it's a lot yeah, of love. For all the other young guys that I haven't mentioned your names, I do apologize, but you guys know who you are. Yeah. These guys, these young generations are the ones that are going to keep this going for the next 50 years. So That's you guys up. are very much appreciated. Yeah, and just thank you for allowing us to be a part of this format right here and thank you for uh, putting our words out of the air. Yeah, all right. And thank you for being with us. We'll see you again next week. Bye.